Hi, I'm Jane Gibbons. I'm an instructional designer here at Unicon. Welcome to this episode of What Can an Instructional Designer Do For Me? In this episode, we'll talk a bit about what subject matter experts are and how instructional designers, also known as IDs, work with them. Are you a subject matter expert? The truth is most people are subject matter experts in something. That something may be as exotic as raising orchids, as fundamental as roasting a chicken, or as specific as reciting a lesser-known couplet from the early works of a poet. Subject matter experts, called SMEs for short, become experts by repeatedly doing a thing until they develop something like muscle memory. They are experts because they have internalized most, if not all, of the conscious effort required to perform that task or discuss that area of knowledge. So if you're a subject matter expert and you want or need to teach others about your area of expertise, why would you need an instructional designer? Here's why. Those learners don't know what you have already internalized on your way to becoming a SME. They need someone to speak for them as you develop your instruction, and that's where instructional designers come in. We represent the non-experts you want to train, and if your content needs to be moved online, many IDs specialize in this area. Maybe you are a skilled professor with a popular course that you teach in a classroom. You've been asked to put your content online. Is it going to be entirely online or a blended approach, which is both face-to-face -face and online? Either way, this process requires more than just taking your existing face-to-face -face instruction and placing it into online text. How can this content be presented? Let an experienced ID help you. My colleague, Sue Livingston, is here to give you an example of how IDs work with professors to help put their face-to-face -face courses online. Thanks, Jane. In this example, the ID needed to help a science professor. This classroom instructor was being asked to make this a blended class. The challenge was deciding what to put in online content and what needed to remain in the face-to-face -face setting. The instructor had a very good outline of content, but was new to online learning. The science class had a huge hands-on lab component. The hands-on work would still be done in the science lab with the instructor present, but the remaining content would need to be moved online. The lab was shared among several classes and so students had limited time on the real equipment. The ID asked the instructor what areas of the labs routinely gave the students the most trouble. From that conversation, the ID and the instructor were able to determine what information the students needed before they got to the lab. This could be presented online using animations, photos, and illustrations. They also determined that students needed information, yes, but also needed online assessments. This would ensure they understood the content. In addition, they needed to be able to practice what they would do in the lab before they put their hands on the actual equipment. This would be accomplished using an online lab simulation. With this course design, the instructor could enter the lab with well-prepared students and focus their time on the desired outcomes. Here's another example of an ID working with SMEs to create a blended course. An international drilling company had developed a machine designed to clean and close drilling sites. The process was complex, involving nitrogen under pressure. Safety was a primary concern. There were two people in the entire world who knew how to operate this machine, and they'd learned by using the machine on practice sites. The company needed to quickly train many people around the globe. Two SMEs could not personally train all these people in the entire process. The company decided to use online training for all but the most specific tasks that really did require an expert who would be present while training a novice. The two SMEs worked with an ID to determine what training needed to be online and what needed to be in person. The ID started by getting the two SMEs to talk about their ideal in-person learner. What would that person already know before they came to you? What would they already be able to do? What if you could focus the in-person training not only on delicate safety-related tasks, but also troubleshooting? That conversation led to several more in which the outlines for the online training and the in-person training were developed. By having an ID lead the conversation with the SMEs, questions were asked and answered that hadn't previously been considered. These two examples illustrate the beginning of the process that an ID uses to help SMEs develop online courseware. The ID continues to work with the SME throughout, 
ensuring that the point of view of the learner is always at the center of decisions about learning styles, presentation methods, user experience, and assessment methods. And speaking of assessments, how do your students know if they're ready to take a test? How do they know that they're really comprehending the content as they move through your course? Learning checks. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next episode of What Can an Instructional Designer Do For Me? Thanks for watching.